Morgan has requested me on Patreon to review a futile and stupid gesture, a biopic about National Lampoon co-founder Douglas Kenny. I've talked before about the trickiness of biopics and making sure they're not just a filmed Wikipedia article that tells you this happened, then this happened, then this happened. While this movie uses some of the familiar hallmarks of the biopic, it also does a number of clever things that plays around with the format and does a decent job of exploring Kenny and his willingness to go to certain comedic places. There's a self-awareness to the film I appreciate as it depicts Kenny's rise in the creative process. A funny device is having the late Martin Mall play an older Kenny narrating the story, and this is where a lot of the fourth wall humor comes from. Anyone watching the movie who is already familiar with his life will know that he died at the age of 33, and this is a complete invention of the movie. But this ends up a fun way to do the usual biopic trope of someone looking back at their younger years and how they achieved their fame. Maul also has some of the funniest lines in the movie, including a part where he gets a date and location wrong as the real information flashes on the screen, and talks about what had to be removed from the movie for time and story purposes. It's thanks to this device that a futile and stupid gesture largely avoids the standard this happened then this happened style of biopic writing I mentioned. The film also makes fun of some of the actors not looking exactly like their real-life counterparts. The most spot-on casting is actually with Lonnie Ross as Ivan Reitman, who do look remarkably alike. Will Forte plays Douglas Kenny from his college years up to his death, and does a good job of playing the role and showing his comical drive as well as the moments where he's down. The film does not shy away from depicting Kenny's less admirable traits and how he'd occasionally alienate those around him. However, we also see what influenced his comedy and how he wanted to rock the boat with National Lampoon and his other projects. There's a hope that he can overcome his personal problems and continue to have his success. Some of my favorite parts involve the meetings within the National Lampoon offices. The scenes of the writers just pitching ideas and their discussions about jokes provide some amusing moments, as does when Kenny and his best friend Henry Beard go into the office of the magazine's owner, Maddie Simmons. The filmmakers appear to intend on showing how National Lampoon would change the comedy landscape, and they do a decent job of portraying that through the magazine's edgy humor and why it attracted an audience. I also like the scenes depicting the making of Animal House and Caddyshack and the creativity Douglas Kenny felt when writing those movies. Although curiously, a futile and stupid gesture depicts both films being produced by the same studio and if Kenny deal with the same executive. While said executive is given a fictional name, he's clearly meant to be Ned Tannen, who was president of Universal during production of Animal House. However, he had nothing to do with Caddyshack, which was produced by Orion Pictures. I'm a nerd for this kind of thing, so of the historical inaccuracies in the film, that jumps out at me the most. The film does eventually take a sadder tone, which it kind of has to when depicting Douglas Kenny's life. I thought the director, David Wayne, did a good job of transitioning to the more downer third act. It helps that Kenny's low point was the mixed reception Caddyshack received when it first opened, and his behavior at a press event for the movie, which really did happen similarly to what's depicted. Wayne's work tends to be purely silly, but he handles the emotional scenes with a proper level of gravitas, including Kenny's weight. Personally, I've never been fond of food fights in movies, but I understand the one here is meant to be an homage to Animal House, and one of Kenny's friends even said he actually thought of doing a food fight at his wake, but decided against it, so I give this one a bit of a pass. I mostly focused on Will Forte, but the cast of this movie is truly massive, and even those in small roles make the most of what they have. In addition to Forte, the standouts to me were Matt Walsh as Maddie Simmons, Joel McHale as Chevy Chase, and Thomas Lennon as Michael O'Donoghue. I do wish Natasha Leone was given a bit more screen time as National Lampoon writer and Beats, but I understand you can only give so much attention to important people in a 100-minute biopic. They even lampshaded at one point by listing Lampoon writers not included in the movie, like John Hughes. Overall, A Futile and Stupid Gesture is a solid depiction of the life of Douglas Kenny and does a decent job of showing how his magazine became so popular and what possibly led to his life taking a dark turn. If you've watched the movie, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for the quest, Morgan.